So, as I promised, we're going to go for a ride in the new car today. New car. Well, the bells are going to keep me from telling you anything, so I'll just get in the car. Oh, wrong. Wrong Mercedes. Hmm. Let's try the right Mercedes. There we go. Okay. Let me check my... Uh, oops. Huh. I have a nice connection here. We go. Well, I guess it's... You see pretty much what I'm looking at. Yeah. Okay. I'll put you down here, then I can keep an eye on what you're seeing. So this is our old used car. I mean our new our new used nine our new old used car which is a Mercedes-Benz B class which was not imported into the United States, I don't think. I'm pretty sure. And um, it's just a plain Jane sort of sort of car um, that will serve us well. We have our we have our new C three hundred T. Fast car. <laughs> and this will serve more, well, Chef Tush called it, called this um, Hallgrim's car. And that's sort of the way it is because Karen's going to use it mostly to. Um, to take uh, Hagrim out for walks and to take him to dog school. She is at school with him right now. In fact, he's at a, a training, another training class. Karen wants to um, eventually do uh, search and rescue work with Hagrim, but she has to go through what's first called man trailing where someone hides and the dogs have to find him and in order to do that he's going to have to get more he has to be completely reliable that is uh, he can't suddenly take off to go visit another dog which he does at the moment German Shepherds don't aren't really uh, adults until they're three years old and he's just two and so he's just a huge puppy he's a 88 pound puppy and uh, he's very well trained he can he knows all of the commands and he can do them all but he's still irresponsible when it comes to other dogs for instance whoops we won't argue with this truck here we'll just let him pass us. Ugh. Very narrow road. We're just leaving rural Kirchen and I'm going to check my cell phone here to make sure that you're seeing what I'm seeing and the camera is still actually taking video and so on and so forth. They have completely, uh, they are completely rebuilding this road here which is a very good thing because it was really a mess. So let's see what we're seeing here. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me, huh? This is about where I hold my head if I'm looking out the, the window. And yeah, that's good. Okay. I'm going to take you to uh, Fischbach, where, we, where I've never taken you before. Anyway, you get an idea of what the car is like. It's um, just like a car. Again, I uh,
I have a special viewer that I like to make these car videos for. My friend Ray, we've been friends since college. I've talked about him a number of times on my videos. And um, he's very interested in cars. <coughs> So, um, Ray, this is partly for you and partly for anyone else who might be interested in seeing an old, <laughs> an old family car with an old family. And this is Fischbach, which is a little farming community, if you will. Community is a little bit. Uh, optimistic. I think there's a population of about a hundred people or so here, if that many. This looks kind of strange here. What's going on? Oh. Some kind of work there. Fischbach. <laughs> Some drive in silos over there. These, um, I'm not sure what's growing here, if that's just grass or if that's. Uh, that may actually be, that may actually be wheat. They redid this road, this part of the road, a few months ago. This is a very minor road. It's uh, you'll. A lot of people will say, whoa, there's no traffic on those roads. Well, actually, there isn't much traffic because <coughs> there aren't many people traveling <laughs> that have any reason to be traveling on them. One of the things that I really appreciate, appreciate about Germany is that our um, infrastructure is so good. Even roads like, secondary roads like this are taken, are rebuilt. Sometimes it's frustrating because it takes a long time to redo them but um, but they're nice it is very narrow of course there really is no reason for a truck to go down the road like this a big truck anyway so it's adequate and it's nice and smooth boy they did a great job completely resurfaced it This car is, um, has about, as you can see, it has um, 157,000 kilometers. Um, it's got a five-speed standard transmission, about 100 horsepower, 1500 cc engine. That's very smooth. It's a very nice engine. It's, it's actually nicer than the 1900 cc that we had in our <coughs> in our A class. And um, the amazing thing about this car is that it is completely rust-free. I don't know why. I, I can only think that the people, the, there, there's only one owner before us, and they must not have driven it in the winter is all I can think, because cars here, just like in the Middle West of the United States, they, um, they get rusty because of salt and snow and oh boy uh, it's, some of these some of these tractors are I wonder if they're really within the legal limits of their width 
Anyway, this car is, uh, like I say, free of rust, the bottom and upper part. This is uh, a postal truck in front of us here, and it is electric. It's made the German post office, the German postal system, builds their own all-electric trucks. And they're supposed to be quite good if you're into electric trucks. So this is Willingshausen. I've brought you here before. This is the little art colony. That um, I showed you one time in a video a couple of years ago, I guess. my orthopedic shoe store. <laughs> and here's the farm on the left where we buy potatoes. This is what used to be a nice little restaurant but they collapsed because of COVID of course. This car has a very good heater and it has an amazingly good AC. It uh, cools like a refrigerator. I was really surprised. It's automatic too. I mean, you can set the you set the temperature and it uh, regulates itself. I suspect gas mileage is going to be pretty good. I don't know if, uh, maybe you can, there's, it's got a, what, what it call, what's called a board computer here, this funny little display in front of me here that says we've gone 43.1 kilometers since I've, since I got gassed. It's 19 degrees Celsius and it's 1214. But if I push this button here, it says audio off, Einstellung, uh, I don't need that. This is kilometers, uh, going 27 kilometers per hour at the moment. Uh, huh. There are other things that you can, I've seen other things here. Maybe if you push the other button here. Uh, that does the same thing, I guess. What does this do? I don't want to press too many, but oh, here, it says we can go 688 kilometers. I got, um, the tank was almost empty. Gosh, I don't remember how many, oh, wait a minute. No, I don't have a, I had to bill somewhere for the gas. No, I didn't have the bill because Karin, we got both cars filled up at the same time, and she paid for both of them, so I don't have a bill. I, f I forgot how many liters I got. I'll have to look. I don't know what all this stuff is that I'm doing here. I'd better just pay attention to the road, in fact. It's kind of curvy. <laughs> it's a nice road. I really enjoy this, especially... On a, I used to, when I used to ride a bicycle, this was really a wonderful place to ride. It'd be kind of a nice place to have a, nah, nothing fast. An old sports car of some kind, an MGA or a TR3 or... A Sprite. Or a MG Mini. <laughs> the old days. This road would be really perfect for them. 
This is the little town of Bernsburg where I've brought you before too because my mechanic is here in this town and that's he's the one we bought this car or who 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 we bought this car through anyway. There's a very, very nice house in front of us there that has completely fallen into utter disrepair and probably will get torn down eventually. It's too bitty. Too bad because it was 15 years ago it was still very nice. People here are no, I don't want to generalize. Some people clearly don't have the resources to rebuild their old houses. Thankfully, they don't tear them down and build little bungalows or something. They just leave them and they're so substantial that even if <clears throat> if they fall into disrepair like that one did, you can actually, it's actually worth rebuilding it then. like about this car is that it has a lot of room in back for a Halgrim and uh, we have ordered a oh it's like a it's like a tub rubbery plastic tub that lines the whole back of the car <coughs> So that when he gets in with his muddy paws, it won't um, get everything all dirty. One of the disadvantages the car has is it's very light inside, and since we tend to use, since we plan to use it as a con as a dog car and a res construction vehicle, it's going to be difficult keeping it clean. We also have a barrier for that'll keep Pogum in back in case of an accident so that he doesn't fly forward. And we got the necessary accessories that are required by German law like a first aid kit and uh, well, it had a triangle, a warning triangle. We got a, we got a second one because I, I always like to have two just in case if you have an accident. It's good to put a triangle in front and in back of the car. <coughs> I haven't done any high speed. <laughs> High speed runs with this car yet. We haven't been on the Autobahn with it yet. I'm sure it'll go 130 or 140 or maybe even 160 if you uh, really want to go that fast. But um, that's not what we bought it for. We have a, our other car is very fast and we can, if we're in a hurry to go somewhere on the Autobahn, we can take it. And we will. So this is a kind of a dangerous corner here because of these signs. It's hard to see. It's hard to see if someone's coming. So here we are back in rural Kirchen. Very nice day today, that's for sure.
right here's the bakery Karin got us some bread rolls for breakfast there this morning she gets them every day she goes out with Talgrim in the morning and then gets some brochen for our breakfast and sometimes she gets me something sweet like a what do you call it in, in America? A Danish sweet roll, my dad would have called it. It says it's 12.2 degrees Celsius here. No. I'm sorry, it says it's 19.5 degrees Celsius. I thought it's certainly warmer than that. So it's almost, uh, well, it's 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Very, very nice. These are the roads I take, I'm driving all over the road here. These are the roads I take you on whenever I go out. This is, we're coming to Seibelsdorf. By the way, I'm taking this video with a, um, check and see if it's still, is it, is it still, it says it's still taking video, so hope that's right. I'm taking this video with a, an inexpensive GoPro knockoff, um, an SJ4000, it's called, which I learned about from my friend Rusty Glovebox, who had one a few years ago. I think he's gone out to, to a real GoPro or something, but in any case, I've not used it very often, but it seems to work all right. So I don't want to I don't want to park here because those people may have to use this road. So I'll go back. I guess I will. Let's just see what we can do here. Oh. I just got used to driving automatic. The first automatic car I've ever owned was the is the. The big station wagon. Oh, I don't want to pull into there with those rocks. I'm looking for a place to pull over so we can, so I can get out and take a look at the car myself. I haven't really had much of a or taken the opportunity to do that. Maybe over here. Oh, there's a good grief. Oh, my word. Hmm. Better call up about that. There's, they need to come empty that, that used clothing bin. Hmm. Well, here's a place in the shade. Maybe that's a, a good place. Okay, so you've seen the inside of the car here pretty much. We 
it is it is very clean well taken care of obviously it does have two dings one of them here you can see you can see me too uh, with my big belly here's a uh, ding, ding there it's been touched up but uh, it's very visible and then there's one on the bonnet on the uh, the hood here to a little one there it's, just, it's really it's really hardly noticeable at all but um, the mechanic says he has a body man who would do it for 150 euros do both of those take them out I don't know if it's worth it or not the rest of the car certainly looks in in good condition plenty of room in it that's for sure you can easily ride five people <coughs> Plenty of room for Hogrim back here, so we get this. We'll put in this um, this tray down here that actually goes up all the way on the sides here, and protecting the the uh, this mouse fur on the sides here. This car is not supposed to actually have a spare tire, but it does. Someone has thrown one in here. In any case, uh, I presume it's the right size. <laughs> it. Um, The car has a uh, one of those things that you blow up the tire. It's not even supposed to have a jack. You're just supposed to blow up the tire with this uh, foam or whatever it is that uh, you squirt in there and then uh, have to have a new tire put on this next opportunity. That's back in there somewhere, some the, the, the can of foam. And here's the, here's the triangle that belongs to the car. And this is the uh, first aid kit we we bought to put in here. You have to have that by law in Germany. You also have to have two safety vests. It's nice that it has a hitch, a um, trailer hitch. Although both of our cars now have trailer hitches. I'd rather use this one actually than the than the big car to take things to the dump anyway. The bumper is new here, this back, this rear bumper, it was cracked and he completely replaced it with a new one and uh, including the, uh, and painted it. So all in all, we're quite pleased with, with our, with our new old car where this road goes so maybe we'll go down to the end there and take a look at see a horse I have actually I really don't know where this goes just occurred to me I don't know where this road goes it must go down to the lake well we'll go there we'll drive down there and see where what we find if this thing stops recording then it stops you've seen enough of the car <laughs> Well, to no one's particular surprise, the uh, little camera shut off and um, it didn't record the last half of my recording, which is probably just as well. It was too long anyway. So I decided to come out this afternoon. It's about four o'clock, I guess, and um, finish up what I started which actually is to do with this car. And, um, oops, I'm using my gimbal here. Now I'm using my 
my cell phone again. There we are. Let's see. Here. Anyway, I just I just managed to um, shut this gimbal off again. I've got to remember not to hold it anywhere near that button. I wonder if I can put tape over it, maybe, or something. Anyway, I'm. Uh, what is this guy doing? I'm uh, going to show you the motor of the car, which might interest a few people, although it's probably only going to be, I haven't looked at it myself, it's probably only going to be some plastic to see, but we'll take a look at it nonetheless. Get back a little further here. I see a black. Yeah. Black nice and clean. Here. Big, big uh, squirt water bottle for the windshield wiper washers. Little tiny motor. <laughs> but there you go. This is the second, well, uh, probably the third engine I've ever, in a car I've ever owned that I, have, I won't be able to ever see the spark plugs probably. I guess you have to access them from down below or something, or maybe they're under these these things here. I don't know what's what's what, but in fact, if I looked at that thing, I wouldn't even recognize it as an engine. Way down there, there seems to be a little computer of some kind in its aluminum case. Looks like it's got a. Oh, I guess the whole engine is aluminum, <laughs> except the plastic parts, of course. Well, so anyway, there it is. It's very clean, very nice under here, actually. Is it? Well, I guess that's about enough about Halgrim's car. <laughs> I'll, um, there's no way I can hold this gimbal and drive a car with a standard shift. So I'll just have to put this down, and you've seen the road we're going to be taking back anyway. And uh, there it is over there. We're only about a mile from, a mile and a half from home. Okay. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, subscribing. Thanks for commenting. And until next time, ciao.